let's look at some of the factors that are associated with classical conditioning. Yeah. So contingency, right? Uh, the contingency between the CS and the US. This is really what is important. So what we're talking about here is predictability. And again, you'll recall there were some experiments that uh, explain this and show how this actually happens. But the idea is, is that the, the more that conditioned stimulus predicts the unconditioned stimulus, the more powerful the conditioning is going to be. Um, if the prediction wanes a little bit, if it gets smaller, then the CS is not going to be as likely to produce a CR. But as long as that prediction is really high, then the CS is definitely going to produce a CR. Uh, trace conditioning is a procedure that works really well. Um, so what we want to do here is present the CS and then turn it and then take it away for just a moment and then the US comes on. So CS on, CS off, US on, US off. Notice the little gap in between those, right? So it doesn't have to be very long, a second or two. You, and, and that's just generally the most effective procedure. Uh, there's all sorts of other types of classical conditioning procedures. You know, there's you know backward conditioning, which doesn't work hardly at all. Uh, but there's delay conditioning, and there's short delay, long delay, and all this stuff. We don't need to worry about that right now because it's for a different course. But the idea is that that trace conditioning pre uh, procedure works the best. Present the CS, take it away, and then just a moment later, right, um, then present that US. Think about the flower shop, right? You see the sign. Okay, you're walking into the building, you see the sign, you see the sign, you see the sign, then you don't see the sign because you're walking through the building, you get inside, and then you get the flowers and you start to sneeze. Right? So there's the CS, okay, which is the sign, and then it goes away because you can't see it anymore once you walk into the building, and then the US is the actual flowers, you see those, right? and then and you smell them, and then you start to sneeze. Okay? So that's a, a, a good trace conditioning procedure. And if we go through the uh, light atmosphere example, I see the sign light atmosphere. That's actually the sign, by the way. That really is the wall, and behind that wall is the restaurant. Um, so when you see that sign, then you're going to go through your security check, and then you're going to go inside the compound, and you eventually order your din dinner. Um, so there's a bit of a delay there. It's a, or it's, sorry, a trace there. There's quite a gap between the time you see that sign and the time you get your food. So um, it does work, you know, and it, uh, like I said, it did make me hungry just looking at it a moment ago. No experience with the CS is something else that's important. The more experience you have with a conditioned stimulus, okay, um, before you ever start to connect it to the unconditioned stimulus, then what we're really going to say here is that it's going to have less predictability. So if I've been exposed to, let's say, keys. I'm going to make a sound of keys here, so don't freak out. Okay, so I'm playing with my keys. Right? We've all heard that sound a million times. right? So the idea is that if I then take this sound and try to pair it with food, it's going to take a lot longer okay, to develop conditioning to that sound than what it would if I made, let's see, some other sound. Let's come up with some other sound that I could do that we might not be familiar with. Mm. Here's a good one. If anybody can even figure out what that is, I'll be surprised. Right? But the idea is, is that that conditioned stimulus, which this sound could be, I'll do it again. Because you don't have much experience with that, I could pair that with food and quite readily you would develop conditioning to that. And by the way, that's a plastic fork being smacked on my desk. Now I could do it with the tongue. I'm not going to mess around with it. I get distracted and start playing. All right. So the less experience you have with the conditioned stimulus, stimulus before you start the training, before you start that uh, respondent procedure, the more likely it is that you're going to develop conditioning. And again, this is all just because of that contingency, right? Because of the predictability. Um, if you have had that experience before, then it already does not predict the unconditional stimulus. Right? Higher order conditioning, this is kind of fun. Um, so we can take a CS, right? and then, oh, I think I've got an example of this. All right. So here we go. So we're going to take a, no, the thing came up in the wrong order. We've got CS1, so we've got the florist, right? Um, and you got this nice car associated with that. So the CS1, we've already developed that, right? So that, remember, that was paired with the flower. So we're now going to pair the car with the florist sign, all right? And then eventually, okay, the car will produce the sneezing. I know it's a cheesy example, but the idea is that that's that higher order. So we had the flower originally, flower produced, uh, made, made uh, flower being paired with the, the florist sign, um, then yield, yielded sneezing, and now what we're going to do is pair something else with that florist sign, and that will also um, yield that new stimulus, that other neutral stimulus will also yield sneezing. Right? 
we still get extinction. We still get spontaneous recovery. With this, however, we don't get that extinction burst, right? Um, but it's still the same thing. How do you do extinction with this stuff? Think about it for just a moment before I fill in the gap. But the idea is pretty straightforward. We're going to present the CS. And then we're not going to follow it with the U.S. In other words, we're going to present the CS over and 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 over, and over again. As we continue to present that CS, we're ruining the predictability between the CS and the U.S. In other words, we're extinguishing that connection between the CS and U.S. Spontaneous recovery happens here as well. Right? Same type of thing where every once in a while after a given break, sometimes that response will come back. Right? So I could continually sit here and present to you the florist sign. Right? And as I present that florist sign to you over and over and over again, eventually you won't sneeze in the presence of it. But then maybe a week later, you come, you go driving down the road and you see another florist sign and smack, you start sneezing. Right? Uh, that's spontaneous recovery. And again, as if you continue down the extinction process, with each spontaneous recovery, uh, it goes, the extinction procedure gets quicker and quicker and quicker. Okay? So, but it's something to expect. It's going to happen. And there's a lot more to it than this. And